closure. He doesn't care about the ten trillion that went to the banks. He's not really, uh, you know, he's not in an uproar about that. He's got a he's got a class conscious standard. In other words, he represents Wall Street. He's somebody who was obviously promoted by William F. Buckley. Somebody who was introduced to Henry Kissinger at an early age. He was brought in with the help of uh, Roger Ailes and others. Uh, so he's basically telling you that the problem with Obama is that Obama is taking your money and giving it to the deadbeats and the losers and the underachievers. And he talks about the achievers, the achieving class, are, of course, the bankers, in Limbaugh's words. He had a woman call him up the other day. Stay saying, there. we got to break. Come back and tell okay. the story. This is very important. Then we'll break down what's... The good plan to fix things versus what their plan is will profile both of those, Webster Griffin Tarpley, as we watch the world slide into deep depression and the bankers couldn't be happier. Did you know that the new energy czar wants to control how much power your electrical company allows you to have? It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Not if, but when. Hi, Bill. I just wanted to call in and let you folks know that I got my solar backup generator hooked up and running. To tell you the truth, it's awesome. Not only was it easy to install, but it's powering my fridge, lights, TV, and shortwave radio. <laughs> I now know that I'm one step closer to getting off the grid. Thanks for all your help. This generator is solar powered, complete with battery backup, has no moving parts to wear out or break, and requires no gas. Don't wait for the energy czar to cut your power or raise your rates. Produce your own electricity for free. Go to mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Or call 877-327-0365. 877-327-0365. In the New World Order's war against humanity, Barack Obama is the tip of the spear. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. The Obama deception completely destroys the myth that Obama is working for the best interest of the American people. Well, Obama's already fudging. He's yeah. fudged since day one in this election. If you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement, a personality cultist, who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs, that's fascism. It's not about left or right. It's about a one-world government. This film documents who Obama works for, the lies he has told, and his real agenda. Get your copy of The Obama Deception today at Infowars.com or download it in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. The Obama Deception. The people strike back. How would you like to finally be debt-free without paying another cent to creditors and not have to file bankruptcy? DebtCrisisSolutions.com can help free you from the debt trap. This is not a debt settlement program which has tax consequences or debt consolidation. With our program, there are no more payments to creditors or collectors. We will help restore your credit history, protect your property, prevent paycheck garnishments, and preserve your bank account. We also provide mortgage modification services which can lower your mortgage payments without refinancing. If you're facing foreclosure or are in the foreclosure process, we can help. Finally, proven debt solutions that work for the people. Become debt-free in 90 days. Doing nothing doesn't make the debt go away. Call Debt Crisis Solutions today and speak to an advisor absolutely free. Call 718-615-0123. That's 718-615-0123. Or visit them online at DebtCrisisSolutions.com. That's DebtCrisisSolutions.com today. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Okay, Webster Tarbley in studio. A lot of key info to cover. Finish up with how Obama and Limbaugh, they're really on the same team. They just create the illusion of choice and that a fight is going on. Obama props up Limbaugh with the phony right wing. Limbaugh, as White House memo says, props up Obama with his supporters because they say, well, we hate Obama. Then, then, then uh, you know, Limbaugh saying he's helping the poor when in reality he isn't. He's imploding the economy, going into shock therapy. So this is how this mind game works. Break it down. Well, Obama is not the new Roosevelt. He's the new Carter. He's not the new New Deal. He's the new Malaise, except that the handlers of Obama, the Brzezinski's and Volkers and so forth, have learned from Carter that you can't just go with austerity, sacrifice, blood, sweat and tears, malaise and all this stuff. 
you've got to have some window dressing up front. So Obama, also to placate various uh, Democrats in the House and Congress in general, Obama has put some pieces, uh, some crumbs, some chum, right, have been thrown up front. Are the twenty billion for food stamps, forty billion for uh, uh, unemployment benefits, maybe fifty to sixty billion for infrastructure. Now, the U.S. infrastructure deficit is maybe five trillion, seven trillion, eight trillion. Instead, we get fifty to sixty billion of infrastructure from from Obama. So this is basically camouflage and window dressing. But notice what uh, what Limbaugh does. Limbaugh attacks the Cape, not the Matador. Limbaugh attacks the uh, the uh, these penny ante camouflage things that are set up there in the uh, in the in the foreground, and he ignores the fact that you have all of this money going to the bank. So this is a charade. In other words, this is a dog and pony show that's now being set up. Uh, Limbaugh says Obama's a socialist, and uh, he's actually helping Obama. Every time that uh, Limbaugh attacks Obama as a socialist or somebody who's helping the deadbeats, helping the poor, helping the losers, that helps Obama because a large number of people say, well, you know, under, under Limbaugh, we'd be left with nothing but our eyes to cry with. So this is a terrible, terrible situation. Now, you asked before, the, what can you do in this situation, right? How do you get out of a depression? Uh, there are really there are four possibilities that have been tried. Right, one is what the Republicans say. They say deflation. They say. Well, let me stop you. Go back to the economic theory when this was developed. These four systems. Okay. Well, this this is a speech by this guy Lautenbach to the Friedrich List Society in Berlin in September of 1931. So Germany is sliding rapidly into depression. The British have just defaulted on gold. September 1931. The de world depression is getting really deep, and, and they're looking at uh, the threat of Hitler. So these guys in the, in the German central bank said, well, what should we do? And Lautenbach gave this speech to this famous meeting where he said, look, one way would be deflation. Cut the budget, cut public expenditure, try to balance the budget, let everybody go bankrupt. Uh, this is uh, essentially what Andrew Mellon was talking about, right? the guy who ran Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover. When Andrew Mellon said, liquidate stocks, liquidate bonds, liquidate real estate, liquidate labor, <laughs> too bad if you die, right? Or Schumpeter says, creative destruction. Well, if you get destroyed, you're not going to feel very creative. So that obviously, says Lautenbach, that's no good. What's the other one? Well, there's the Keynesian one, what later became the Keynesian one, which is have a consumer-led recovery. Give people money, let them go out and buy refrigerators and shoes and, and uh, electronics and so forth. Um, the problem with that is once you've done it, you've done it once, you have the same problem next year. In other words, it might give you a, a very mild, immediate lift, but it doesn't solve anything durable. And then, then it leads into inflation. Leads into inflation. And uh, this is, I think this is what the House Democrats think of. People who are Keynesian, uh, who really are Keynesian, think this. The other example would be the French Popular Front of 1936. And the bankers like that because you get shoes and refrigerators uh, and iPods. But then they get the interest on that debt. But go ahead. Yeah, but this, it, as, as Lautenbach says, this consumer-led stuff, it, it doesn't, doesn't get you anywhere. In other words, whatever you spend, it gives you a little bit of a lift, but then you're, you're back in the Depression. The third one is the hot money alternative. Just start the printing presses, do what Bernanke is doing now, right? He's helicopter Ben Bernanke because of this speech where he says, if you have a Depression, you take bales of dollar bills and put them on the, on the front lawns of bankers, and then you reflate the system with hot money. And as Lautenbach says, that doesn't work because a lot of that money will flee overseas as hot money. And that's what we've had with the TARP, right? The money went to Barclays of Britain, to Deutsche Bank of Germany, to Société Générale of France, investments in Dubai, in India, in Israel, and the U.S. automobile industry is collapsing. So that doesn't work. Then says Lautenbach, what is left is building infrastructure. In other words, permanent, valuable upgrades and improvements to the capital stock of your nation, long-term durable investments in rail systems, transportation, electricity generation, canals, locks, water systems, uh, electronic infrastructure of all sorts. Uh, and he says the, the problem with that is, is, uh, is simply the banks need to be supported by a national bank. Let's say the United States decides to build 50,000 miles of maglev rail, and we want to have a, a railroad from New York to San Francisco. We want to have a northern transcontinental, a southern transcontinental, and then we have New York to San Francisco. You'd issue bonds. The bonds would be bought by um, 
well, banks, in other words, the states or the federal government could issue bonds for this. As long as the, the person who buys the bonds can turn around as a banker and say to the Federal Reserve, I want money for that. In other words, I'm giving you a transcontinental maglev bond priced at 100. You're going to give me 99. In other words, you're going to, you're going to discount that bond. In that case, you have nationalized the Federal Reserve. You have forced the Federal Reserve